Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Blackview's new dedicated dash cam battery pack. This is the PowerMagic Ultra battery, the B124. Now, this is designed to power your dash cam while you're parked. The idea is you plug it into your car, and as you're driving around, your car is gonna charge the battery, and the battery is gonna power your dash cam. Then when you turn your car off, the battery is gonna to continue to power your dash cam when it switches into parking mode. So you've got continuous recording, both when you're driving as well as when you're parked. Now, there's actually a ton of different ways to do this, and I actually wanna do a follow-up video talking about how this actually compares to a lot of the other options out there. I did a video recently talking about the Cell Link Neo, which is basically the same thing as the B124, just kind of a rebadged version of it. There are a couple little differences that I want to go over, but they're almost the same thing. Uh, you've got Blackview's uh, previous gen battery, the B124. You have the uh, Power Magic Pro, which I have installed in my car as well, that lets you power your dash cam off of your car's battery. Uh, you could even use those little portable USB battery packs that are designed to charge your phone, but you could use these to power your dash cam too. So I want to do a follow-up video going over kind of how this one compares to everything else, but in short, um, if you're looking to power a dash cam, especially one of the Blackview ones, uh, while this is compatible with a lot of different dash cams, uh, this is actually my preferred solution for the uh, DR900S2 channel, which is uh, kind of my favorite dash cam that I'm running at this point. It's a two channel one, so both front and rear. You can see the, fr the rear right there. Uh, records in 4K up front. Uh, it records both when you're driving as well as when you're parked. And Blackview seems to have some of the best parked recording that's out there as well. And since we're focusing on parked recording, hence the whole battery thing, uh, I want to go ahead and go into a little bit more detail about uh, this battery pack and uh, just kind of record times, uh, all the different features and options, that kind of stuff and what it's like. So uh, I guess starting off with the numbers, if you are running a single channel dash cam, uh, meaning just one camera, this guy is advertised as being able to record uh, for 28 hours at a time, which is pretty impressive. If you look at their previous gen, the B112, this gave you up to 12 hours of recording uh, with a single channel dash cam as opposed to 28 here. So more than double the recording time, which is really nice. Uh, if you switch over and run a two channel dash cam, meaning front and rear, you've got an additional camera. So your uh, record times do go down, um, but they advertise a record time of 20 hours. And that's really close to in line with what I'm seeing in practice. I tried to test the other day with the DR900S2 channel uh, and this battery pack. So from completely full to dead, I got about 18 hours of record time. Uh, I tried it with the Thinkware F800 Pro, the two channel, and I got about 19 hours of record time. Going for the course of about a week or so and logging how much record time I get, I got an average of about 21 and a half hours. And so sometimes you get a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, but overall it seems to be right in line with the 20 hours that they advertise. Now, what happens when the battery is dead? How long does it take to fully recharge? Well, it actually depends on how you plug it in. You see, if you take a look at the battery, uh, we've got a number of different ports here. This is the input power port. You can plug it in either with a cigarette lighter cable like this, so plug into your cigarette lighter, and this actually plugs right into the dash cam right there. And then you've got a switch right here, and you just set it to cigarette lighter mode. Uh, alternatively, you can actually hardwire this into your car, and you just flip this switch here and say, this is now hardwired. So two different ways of doing it, and they each have their pros and cons. Uh, if you go with the cigarette lighter solution, that's a little easier to do. You just plug it into your cigarette lighter and done. So it makes the install really simple. However, if you hardwire it into your vehicle, it frees up your cigarette lighter so you could use it for other things. Plus, it actually allows the battery to recharge faster. Uh, the battery can actually draw more current in the hardwired option. Uh, if you plug it into the cigarette lighter, it'll draw five amps. If you hardwire it into your car, it'll draw nine amps. And with the faster power that it's able to suck in effectively, it just allows the battery to recharge faster. Uh, Blackview advertises a recharge time of 80 minutes over the cigarette lighter option, and then 40 minutes if you hardwire it. Uh, I run it hardwired in my car. Um, I found an average testing, again, for about a week or so, and just seeing how fast does it recharge my battery at the end of a drive. Uh, I found a recharge time of about 56 minutes or so hardwired into my car. So a little bit more than the 40 minutes it's advertised, but less than the 80 minutes if I was uh, running it over the cigarette lighter. Now, if you need longer record times uh, to power your dash cam while it's parked, uh, you'll notice right here there is a yellow port that says expansion. That actually allows you to daisy chain additional expansion battery packs into this one to double or triple your record time depending on how many battery packs you add to it. Uh, and then there's an option right here for dash cam where basically you just have the uh, the cigarette lighter little dongle like this and it just plugs in there and then the dash cam plugs into here. So that's what all these different ports are for here. Now inside the battery, uh, it also comes with Bluetooth so you can pair it with your phone, Android or iOS, and that adds a number of really cool features. 
Now Blackview actually has two different apps available for their products. One is going to be uh, to control the dash cam itself. The other one is going to be for the battery. Uh, the idea, and they're kind of linked now, which is cool. You can open the, uh, the dash cam one and you'll see at the bottom here, it says Blackview battery. If you tap on that, it's going to go ahead and drop you into the uh, battery app itself. So that's kind of nifty. Now, if you take a look at the app, you'll see that there's options for showing you uh, the capacity of the battery. You can see right now it's full, so it says 100%. It'll show you the temperature of the battery, uh, and it's got temperature protection in case it overheats or anything, which is kind of nice. It'll tell you the power that's going in and the power that's going out of the battery. It'll also tell you how much longer it'll take to fully recharge the battery or even how much time it'll take to uh, fully drain the battery and how much record time you have while you're parked. Another option that I like, if we go over into the settings, you'll see the option for beep on and off. We can turn that one on and off, and that's pretty handy. Uh, I talked about this when comparing it to the Cell Link Neo, or sorry, the Cell Link B. Uh, that was a battery pack, kind of similar to this, but one of the annoyances that I found is there's a beep that it has whenever it starts up and shuts down. It can be kind of nice for confirming that everything is plugged in and working, but it also gets kind of annoying and there's no way to turn it off. With this one, there's now an option in the app to where you can turn off that beep if you don't want to be annoyed by your battery pack, or you could turn it on if you want the confirmation, and it's cool to have that choice. And then you can see there's also an option for things like uh, adjusting the battery capacity, and that's for if you're adding additional expansion batteries, you can just go in and type in your total capacity right here. Now, overall, I like the Bluetooth functionality, and I actually prefer it to their previous solution to where uh, their batteries actually had a couple LEDs right here to tell you the relative charge level of the battery. Um, with four LEDs, I mean, you could tell kind of roughly what the battery charge level was, but you couldn't tell exactly. This one gives you more information, plus you get things like, uh, you know, how long it can actually power your dash cam for or even how long it's going to take to fully recharge. It does take a little bit more work to actually go into the app and stuff instead of glancing down at the battery, but you get additional information and if your battery is maybe installed somewhere to where you can't see it, uh, it just makes it easier to track from anywhere or even if you're outside of your car, you know, that's kind of nice. There is one annoyance that I found with the Bluetooth and that is that uh, when you're connected to the app and then you park your car and you leave and you walk away, when it disconnects, it actually throws this Bluetooth disconnection pop-up on the phone and I haven't actually found a way to get rid of that uh, disconnection nag. Uh, somebody that I've been talking to online mentioned that they don't have that same pop-up happen on their phone. Uh, we're both running iPhones. I've got an iPhone 8, he's got an iPhone 10. We're both running iOS 11. Um, and for whatever reason, it doesn't happen on his phone, but it does on mine. I've gone through the settings and I'm not sure, uh, I don't see any option to disable that. If you guys know of something, let me know so I can do it. So it is apparently, there's a way to do it so you don't get that nag, but I'm not sure how to do it. So kind of what I do is I don't disc or I don't connect to it uh, unless there's something I need to check because if it doesn't connect, then I don't get the disconnect error when I leave my car. And usually I don't need to check that kind of stuff, um, but it is kind of an annoyance if I do connect and then when I leave, I get the disconnect error. But other than that, it's not too big of a deal and it is kind of avoidable so long as I guess you don't connect. And I guess other people don't have that issue, but I wanted to talk about that anyways in case uh, you run into that issue as well. But ultimately, when it comes to the battery itself, uh, I'm actually pretty happy with the record times that I get out of it. And it's nice having a, you know, a large capacity available to me. I mean, it's nice if I'm running just my primary dash cam or let's say I'm wanting to actually test multiple dash cams at the same time. It's nice having the extra juice available. That's maybe not something that a lot of people need. For most people, you're just going to be running one dash cam because, well, that's the norm, you know. Um, and if you're running a dash cam, it's nice to have extended recording times over uh, maybe what some of the previous gen batteries are able to offer. Um, so anyways, that's kind of my take on it. Uh, again, I'm pretty happy with the solution and it's going to become my uh, daily driver in terms of a power source for my dash cam when I'm parked. Uh, if you're curious about how it compares to some of the other options, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, uh, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video, so make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for that, and I'll post some more detailed information about how this compares to all the other options. But in short, it's kind of my favorite solution and my preferred solution uh, as, far, as far as powering my favorite dash cam at this point. So I'll have some additional information down below. Uh, I'm also going to have a discount code for you guys. Uh, if you want to pick one of these up, the regular battery or the expansion, uh, when you go to purchase one, click the link down in the video description and then type in the code VORTEX20 and it will save you guys 20 bucks off the purchase of your battery pack. So just a way to save some cash off these batteries for you. So anyways, yeah, there you go. I hope you guys have found this helpful. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.